loud, profane, funniest man in the room. And he just, just brought it every day. He had principles that he would not deviate from. And that included on the basketball court and most definitely off the basketball court. For John, somebody who who played high school basketball in Philadelphia, Ben Franklin High School, uh, public league player of the year, got zero scholarships offers from from the Big Five. For for went to Bethune Cookman, got an education, worked his way up, was was working as a waiter for a catering company in his 40s when he was teaching and coaching at Simon Gratz, uh, and before he got the Cheney job, over 40 years old, before he got the Temple job, over 50 years old. He sort of is Philadelphia. It's interesting that a generation of coaches who didn't just play for Cheney at Temple, but a generation of coaches who, who are from here, from the city, from the region, grew up watching John Cheney, listening to John Cheney, seeing Temple teams play under John Cheney, and their commitment to carrying that on is, is noteworthy. It was never easy time that they, they, they always made that clear, even covering the team that was always clear. So I covered the team from uh, fall of 97 through the end of 2006. So that decade was, was two final eights and then years that were, you know, NIT kind of years, kind of, kind of the end of it, uh, it was, was never easy, but they uniformly this week, players that I talked to just talked about, how transformational it was. And, and, and you got that in real time also. And, and it didn't take John Cheney dying for, for some to talk about that. Um, that, you know, how, you know, realizing that their place was, was, you know, here when they ran into John Cheney in their lives and their kids' lives are here. And, and none of them seem to, to take that that for granted, and they don't just give themselves credit, give the school credit, um, give you know the the state of the world credit. They give John Cheney credit. I mean that that voice. Let me speak on that personally. I mean, so I'll miss when the world was on fire and the city was on fire this summer. Um, it was natural to call John Cheney, and, and he was happy to talk for an hour about his view of things. And his view wasn't always, you know, you, you didn't know what he was going to say. That was the beauty of John, but um, he damn sure wanted to say it. Uh, and he was he was eloquent on, on, on this front for the for this column. And, and he and he talked about his degrees of hopefulness of what he saw that he thought could was was inspiring to him as an old man. He he ended it on a on a uh, moving note about how old man now just sit, we just sit in our rocking chairs and he said, like a limb the next next wind that blows I'm gone. I'm just thinking about that now, but that was uh, that was the last column I really wrote from an extensive conversation with, with, with John. But I mean, you know, strongest limb of Philadelphia basketball, you know, now gone.